Hi. Well, welcome again, too, and thank you for coming. Those of you that are here, those of you that are um, streaming online, hello. So my part of this presentation this evening is I'm going to take you um, and guide you on the journey of being a dyslexic. And to do that, we're going to start off with putting you in the shoes of a struggling reader. Since, most of, since all of you here are skilled readers, what we would like to do is we want you to participate in a simulated reading lesson during which you're going to experience some challenges so that you have a sense of what a struggling reader feels like when he, is, he or she is trying to read. So here we go. Here's our simulation. OK, so here's your lesson. This is what you're going to be reading. This is the paragraph that you're all going to be reading. I see a lot of eager students here. Um, we're not going to single anybody out. We're going to do this as a group. OK, so let's just begin with our lesson. You can see that we're going to start on the right-hand side with the word once, OK? And let's everybody read together. Go ahead. Once. Okay, let me help you guide you through this. Um, most of you have read through this part here. Okay, so read the first word that tells you when. So that would be after the next two words that tell you what? The what? Where? Okay, well, that, that was our lesson. <laughs> and thank you everyone for participating in the lesson. So I have some questions for you. Um, I did hear a lot of people start off reading and then it kind of died off on the end. So I tried to do what a good teacher would do and um, help guide you through some of the process. And now we're at the end here. So I have a question for you. And you're all students, so all of you are going to be eager to um, share something. So what did you do to read the story? What did you try to do to read the story? What are some of the things that some of you did? Thank you. Yes? Match the words to the words I know. OK. So you were matching words to already, you know, it sounds like you were, leading, you were also using a little bit of context clues, huh? Okay, what are some other things that you did to help you read? Yes? Okay, <laughs> what you're talking about is a little bit of fluency. Did you hear what she said? Skip the words that she didn't know, and then she kept going. Because um, you're more comfortable being a fluent reader. Okay, some really good things strategies, other things that some of you might have done. OK. 
okay, so you adjusted your pace. So you slowed way down, and you slowed way down because you did not recognize the word. If you didn't recognize the word, then what were you trying to do? If you didn't, you know, when you typically read, you will read a word that you know, but if you don't know that word, what do you typically do? Try to decode. You try and figure out individual letters. Um, and also, you're familiar with word patterns, so you probably brought brought that into what you were reading. Um, other things that you were probably doing is um, doing what's called sound symbol relationships. When you were identifying the letter, thinking, hmm, what sounds go, go with this? How were you feeling during this experience? Okay, I, so, I see some heads shaking. Anxious, mm -hmm. exhausted, good one. It's a very exhaustive process. Yeah, it was a very exhaustive process. Not the typical reading that um, your typical kind of reading or the typical outcome that you're familiar with. Okay, you were getting dizzy? <laughs> okay, so it was a frustrating experience. It was not a rewarding experience. We want kids. All of us want our kids to enjoy reading, but doing something like this was a very frustrating experience. Um, and so we had you go through, go through this particular exercise just so you could feel some of that frustration. How many of you, while you were maybe stuck on a word, um, you were trying to listen to what the other person was saying? and perhaps get clues. I saw some grins and uh, several hands go up. That's what students who struggle with reading do, is, is they try to figure out what the other kid who they know knows how to read is doing. Okay, how about, um, this is another important thing about reading. What about tracking? What happened to your tracking as you were reading this? Yep. And if you and if you don't know the word, um, it's much more difficult. We typically read in phrases. That's how we comprehend what we're reading. Were you able to read in phrases this way? It was much more difficult. You ended up reading what we call word for word, and so that leads me into comprehension. Um, I have seven questions here, but I'm not gonna ask you all of them. So when and where did this story take place? That's near the beginning. <laughs> Many years ago in the village square. Okay, thumbs up. Who were the characters in the story? Who do you recall? There's a, okay, we got the fiddler, villagers, milkmaid, Butcher, boy and, boy, and a dog. Okay, and I heard some wows from the back of the class. So everybody knows that in our classroom, we're all going to listen to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then some more specific questions. What did the fiddler do? No idea. <laughs> okay, and if you were that student who... Um, was, was not able to read this passage, you would probably use your background knowledge. So just using your background knowledge, and if I said, what did the fiddler do? What could you say? What could you guess? He fiddled, he played. And actually, that's one of the things he did. He played. And that's what a number of our readers, that's what all of us as readers do, is we pull from our background knowledge when we're reading. And some of our really struggling readers, but really bright students who have background knowledge, they can rely on their background knowledge for a little while, while they're reading, and use context clues. But after a while, you notice that 
it was really difficult when we got to the end, and it was not such a rewarding experience. Um, how, so one last question, and this has nothing to do with the content in here, but how well would you comprehend if you knew only half the words? Many of you didn't even know half the words. Be really, really, really difficult. Okay, so this is just to share with you, our, our students that struggle with reading, these are some of the th kind of things they contend with. And it's not just with this one paragraph, it's probably throughout the school day because you're reading across the school day. So let me show you what you were doing. This here is a infographic, and it's an infographic of Hollis Scarborough's seminal reading rope. This infographic captures the complexity of the reading process, and I'll show you a little bit more um, of that process in just a little in just a little bit. But overall, what you can see is there are a number of components involved in reading. Do you see all those different components? And they're all inter integrated, interrelated with each other, yet at the same time, they are independent components. Um, this infographic, I'm gonna move this because the wind is blowing my paper around. <laughs> this infographic, as you can see, is divided into two sets of strands. So one strand here, one set of strands is word recognition and the other set of strands, um, the other set of strands is language comprehension. So take a look here at word recognition and you can see that word recognition consists of phonological awareness, which is the awareness of sounds within a word it consists of decoding, which is the application of the alphabetic principle so that you can read a word. Some of you will know that as sound symbol relationships. And word recognition also involves sight recognition. That means recognizing familiar words. And all of these strands work together and it helps the student become more accurate more fluent and more automatic with word reading. Okay, so keep word recognition in mind and we're gonna go up here. This is the, the, the other strand of um, set of strands, the other set of strands related to reading and this is language comprehension. And language comprehension includes background knowledge, and we just talked about background knowledge, vocabulary, it includes language structures, and language structures involve the syntax and semantics of reading. It's knowing how a sentence is put together so you can extract meaning from a sentence. Okay, language comprehension also includes verbal reasoning. For example, the ability to make inferences or the ability to understand the role of metaphors. And language comprehension includes literacy knowledge. Literacy knowledge um, is all about knowing the different genres involved in reading. So for example, um, we read fictional and non-fictional texts very differently because we're aware of the particular genre, for example, of reading a story in which there are characters and there's settings um, and there's rising action, climax, and closing, there's closing action. So if any of us pick up a story, we, we predict that that's what's gonna happen. Um, in contrast, if we read factual material, non, 
um, non-fictional material, such as a science book, we know there's going to be a key concept and supporting details. Key concept and supporting details. So we read those two particular genres differently. Um, think about reading a newspaper. That's a whole different genre. And that's being able to understand that when I read an article, most of the information is going to be in those first one or two paragraphs. Um, and the less relevant information or the less important information is going to be toward the end of the article. So it's, and there's all kinds of other drama, uh, genres, poetry, um, and on and on and on. <laughs> okay, so that contributes to language comprehension here. And so what these strands here do is these strands reinforce each other to help the student, and you see here, become a more strategic reader. If we look at these two sets of strands, you can see that they weave together to help a student become a skilled reader. Okay. This process takes time, and it takes a lot of practice over time. Lots and lots of practice over time. Okay, know that if any of these strands are weak or they unravel any of these strands, you're going to have a student that struggles with reading. And so it's going to take that student more practice and a longer time to learn how to read, but they will be able to learn how to read. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with um, this here on the very bottom. It says that reading is a multifaceted skill. So you can see here that there are many facets, there are many components involved in reading. And then very important too that this skill is gradually acquired over years of instruction and practice.